Well, I may have officially bit off more than I can chew. Well, I may have officially bit off more than I can chew. So we've got, I think, six of these big cedar butts that we're gonna mill down for a friend who has been super generous uh, and helped us with the house that we've been building for a couple of years. If you haven't seen those videos and you're new to our channel, jump back, we've been at this for a long while. I'm always kind of excited about sawmill projects. I just don't really have a lot of them of my own necessarily. A few here and there, but not enough to really keep busy, which is probably good because I have a lot of other things to do. But a friend uh, messaged recently and said, hey, is there a chance that you can mill up some cedar for me? And I said, yeah, sure, we can do that, no problem. What I didn't know is that these were the butts on some really big old growth cedar logs. I'll just tell you, it's not a good sign when the second question after can you help me sawmill some stuff is how big can you sawmill? That's never a good second question. So I said, well, we could probably get about 28 inches. Uh, this bandsaw mill, it's an LT15 from Woodmiser. We're limited by this distance here and ultimately by this distance here. So if we wanted to mill something this deep, we're actually limited to about 20 inches is all. And on this guy down to here, we can mill about three inches at full width, which comes out to about 27, 28 inches. Of course, we can kind of work through a log like this because as long as it'll go past these uprights, we can kind of nibble, make a turn, nibble, make a turn, and so on, and get this thing down to where we can actually work on it. I'm always excited to be able to help friends who have helped us. We have been the beneficiary of some very kind and generous people. And so this sounded like a fun project, a challenging project, and a really great way to give back. So we've got these five still sitting here on the flatbed and then the one on the sawmill. And the goal is to turn this stuff into five quarter live edge and then where possible, some two and a half inch square posts. Something I learned sawmilling the timber frame for our house was when you get these really big logs, they tend to have a fairly large butt swell on them. They have a lot of taper in the last four feet or so. I think that's why they cut these off like this. I mean, why wouldn't a sawmill take this wood? It's probably fairly clear, or maybe it's not. I'll use Sawyers out there would probably know why the sawmills don't take this last 10 to 12 feet of the log. I know with cedar, there's a little bit of rot uh, that's pretty common in the butt, so maybe that's why they just don't wanna deal with it. I think the primary reason they don't take them is the butt swell. It's so large that the modern sawmills are not really set up with the head rig that can deal with this, which is something that we're struggling with too. Woodmiser does make a mill that's slightly larger than this. It is an LT15, but it's an LT15 wide, and it's capable of a 36 inch cut. Of course, only at the smaller depth, not over here in this portion of the throat. That would be a good solution to this problem, but we opted not to have that sawmill, and there was some really simple reasons why. So long and short of it, we don't have that sawmill, so we're gonna have to get creative to trim this guy down so that it'll fit through and the mill head can actually pass by the end of that log. Once we get that taper removed, the other end is plenty small enough and we can actually get some productivity. Normally, on a large situation like this, I'd probably reach for my chainsaw mill, or mills, plural, and try to use that to pare the log down, but this log is so close to fitting through the mill 
that I think I'm gonna try it without the chainsaw mill. But if we have to, we'll use it. So my chainsaw mill, as it's set up right now, is for a 36 inch bar. That's the biggest bar that I have. But there is a little bit more room to come out and get closer to about a 30 inch throat. Right now I think we're about 28, which ironically is the same throat that the bandsaw mill has. So in the interest of not creating a crazy amount of extra work for myself, we're gonna wing it with the sawmill, and if we have to, we'll backtrack, do some adjustments to the chainsaw mill, and do what we gotta do. Well, she ain't pretty, but I think that's gonna go through the sawmill just fine. Oh, she's gonna be tight on that left side. Oh yeah, look at that. She's a little tight on the right side too. So actually, no, not gonna go through the mill. Darn it, we're close though. We're within probably an inch on the right and less than a half an inch on the left. We're trimmed for size in theory. We're adjusted for taper. That's all calculated out. So I think we're ready for our first cut. So the other problem is that's as high as the saw will go and we've got that kind of thing sticking up down there. So hopefully we can take that all off in one cut. I'm willing to uh, hedge my bets. survived that cut so this wedge was stuck out just far enough that the sawmill couldn't get by so I had to move the whole log over and then we're good thankfully there was enough fudge room on the far side to make that happen we need to take this down a little bit more or as much as we can so when we rotate the log we don't have the same exact problem and it looks to me like there's probably a good five quarter live edge board in here. So let's take at least one, maybe two boards off of there, as long as there's enough room on the throat. And that'll give us a head start. I think if we can get past there, we are home free on this log.
Well, I think we're actually gonna win. The only thing I didn't really see coming is how wide the live edge is going to be. Unfortunately, I don't have a way to just rip this log in half. If I did, we can make a whole bunch of live edge because we can run half the log through the mill, no problem. But as it is, we're maxed out. So I've decided what I'm gonna do is three side this log. So it's gonna have a square edge, a square edge, and a square edge. And then we're basically gonna, just gonna sawmill the boards out of this live edge. The problem is that top side, we had to run the chainsaw on that to get it through the mill. So we pretty much removed half of the live edge. So the only good live edge we have left is this side. I'm sure there's a better way to be doing this stuff, but there's definitely a learning curve to doing big log live edge. I guess that would basically be a slab, wouldn't it? I thought about trying to basically slab this log as best I could and then run the boards through uh, and rip those in half. That would work, except we just don't have the ability to keep the edge on this log and make it small enough to run through the sawmill. So I'm kind of learning right now that doing live edge on monster logs with a fairly small saw doesn't really work. The only way that would work is if we could just chop that guy in half and then we can make a whole bunch of live edge stuff. So I'm guessing thing live edge for me might be more of a smaller log uh, product than these gigantic logs which are probably better for posts and things like that the other option we have is if we end up three siding this log we could rotate it on its back and take a cut off of it and then use this good four or three sided portion for posts and then we'd have just a, maybe half of the log there that we could use for live edge boards. That way we're not getting these humongous uh, 24 inch wide boards. I think what we're gonna do is we're gonna take this side off because the top is really no good. And then we're gonna turn this log on its back and we're gonna take about maybe 15, yeah, we'll go like maybe 16 inches out of here. That'll give us about a 14 and a 16 on the live edge side. And then we'll take a piece off the bottom here and we'll turn this piece, which will end up being square, into posts. And that'll give us a nice chunk to make some good, nice live edge boards. And I think that'll turn out nice. It's a lot of work. I think they call that custom sawing. And if I was doing this for money, I'd probably be losing my shirt. Something tells me we're about to get drenched.
Well, that's not too shabby for one day of work. I definitely feel like I'm kind of working through the kinks and I feel like we found a strategy that worked. It took a little while. I would definitely say this falls under the category of custom sawing and it's a tremendous amount of work kind of figuring out how to get the product and how to work with the log. And there's definitely some issues with the size of the sawmill and these size of logs. So I totally get why sawmills steer clear of this stuff. I'm not really sure what the value of something like this would be. Obviously I don't saw for a living, but you sawyers out there probably have some inkling and I'll definitely put it out there. I'm not a professional sawyer, so don't follow my example. I don't know if I'm doing this right. Obviously this stuff is flat sawn, so some of these boards are probably gonna have a high propensity to cup, uh, but I can't even imagine trying to quarter saw and do live edge, I don't even know how to do that. That's like beyond my ability. Maybe someday I'll be able to learn. At this point, I would say it's a very safe bet that this log and that log are not going through our sawmill. The narrow ends are 28 inches, and that's, I mean, that's absolute maximum on the saw. And this side over here is pushing 30, two or something like that. I think we may have to do something exciting like get the chainsaw mill out and do some surgery to these logs to get them to where we can run them through the bandsaw mill. Some of you watching might be asking yourself, well, it doesn't even make sense to run the bandsaw mill if you've already got the chainsaw mill out. Why not just make lumber with that, right? Save yourself effort. And the, the straight answer is chainsaw mills are horrible for lumber. It has a one half inch kerf. There's a phenomenal amount of waste and sawdust and work. It is crazy how much work a uh, chainsaw mill is when you have access to the bandsaw mill. Uh, we did do a video comparing the two. If you haven't seen that, give it a watch. We kind of share the things we've learned. And um, if you're looking at purchasing one, it'll be a great tutorial. I'm definitely done for the evening. I feel like it's been a really great day. I'm glad I tackled this project. It's kind of out of my experience and I'm, I'm having to work really hard mentally to kind of figure out how to do this stuff. But I am happy that I can. I can kind of take a random, difficult, challenging log and we can still make something out of it, which makes me really proud. So five more logs to go. So stay tuned. We're going to be working on those till they're all done. And this stuff's all back on the flatbed, ready to go to its new home.